What is going on? What is going on? What is happening? I don't even know. I don't even know. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Hey, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to <laughs> the CrossFit Bangor Podcast, Episode 5. I'm sitting here with Mel. Hey, Mel. Hello. With our new microphone, so hopefully, this sounds, so hopefully this sounds a little bit better. Um, we're going to talk about two quick subjects here. Um, the first one is kind of rele- relevant for you right now um, and just dealing with kind of like tweaks and injuries. Um, I mean, there's a there's a big difference between a full-blown injury. So I don't think you're dealing with a full-blown injury right now, but you got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a tweak if you want to kind of dive into that a little bit. I do, actually. Mm. Um, so typical do my mobility, good warm up. Did a great workout uh, with you, a workout that's challenging, which is involved chest to bar. Cool down, did some crossover symmetry, woke up the next morning and couldn't pick my arm up past my belly button. Right. Freak out, absolutely, just like anybody would. Um but instead did some mobility, contact cat, had some aggressive dry needling done. Uh For those who don't know, Kat is the PT. She's the physical therapist. She's wonderful. Yeah, she's uh, super helpful. And she also does CrossFit, so she gets it. She knows what we're doing. She's professional. She works with athletes. She just just gets it. So she aggressively treated um, me for that and, of course, helped me do some accessory work. So I've been really focusing on the accessory work. I do a decent job at mobility. Of course, comes in waves, just like anybody. I'm not going to be on my high horse and tell you that I warm up and do everything perfectly because in reality, I, you know, I'm trying right. to get it done in between classes and such. For sure. But um, she kind of helped me realize that all these big muscles I have, but I have to take care of the tiny little small ones too. Mm-hmm. So working, you know, with crossover symmetry, working over, uh, doing some bulletproof shoulders and such like that, it's just made a huge difference. So with her help and training smart, so I haven't been able to do a lot of the workouts as just as prescribed, which is fine. You know, d- been doing some ring rows and I'm happy that I could, you know, do that uh, and just having to scale a few things back. So Every time I do get injured or have these little tweaks here and there, it actually almost always makes me better in the long run. Right. So I just have to tell myself that, even though it's yeah. it's just hard, you know. It's kind of funny how injuries sometimes bring out the uh, the things you might have been neglecting, even though even though like you haven't been neglecting necessarily the mobility, like the preventative stuff, but maybe like the little accessory works, like the crossover symmetry, you got it. a little bit more or whatever specifically it might be. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that. Getting an injury um, can set you up really well to to work on things you might not normally work on. Um, so, like for instance, um, you know, hurting your upper body and being able to just focus on squats, and like next thing you know, you're squatting all kinds of way. Uh, Pete actually had that experience. Peter just was here not too long ago. He hurt his wrist, absolutely, and for like I don't know, I gotta say like what three months at least he could only basically squat or do anything lower body so he had to modify but he started doing squats and i think he put like 50 pounds on his back squat or something like that now i'm not saying go out and hurt your wrist just to put on 50 pounds on your back squat but <laughs> right. obviously some things go uh by the wayside but um at the same time trying to find the good in the bad um what have you been doing differently um since the shoulder i know you said like ring rows i know we just did helen not that long ago yep i totally um, did i did uh my first round of helen uh elevated my feet did those aren't easy ring rows are they really, are not really and hard. then i did the middle round strict and uh pull-ups which was a huge um like accomplishment for me because my shoulder was getting better it was going in the right direction but i i didn't want to overdo it so then i went back to the ring rows mm-hmm. but it, it was really good it pushed me to have to be faster take advantage you know since i was slower on the rings where i normally would have been faster doing kipping pull-ups so i had to really i had to go faster on the runs which is not necessarily my strength but yeah. it's good mental testing for me absolutely um kind of like that workout that you and i did the other day together mm. with the assault bike and the sled pushes oh um, that was that was a great idea well done Exactly, you know, <laughs> I know that was a more that was turned you. into a more of a mental workout. So I don't know. I it's really easy to get down. You see me. I I kind of go oh, like yeah. full circle in a in a, in a workout sometimes when I can't do something, but then mm-hmm. I just tell myself, nope. But I can do so much more. All right. So. I feel like everyone can relate with that, especially when this is like your deal. Mm-hmm. Like you know, if you have a really stressful job and like this is the one place that makes you feel lot stress or it makes you feel kind of good and then all of a sudden it's kind of taken from you a little bit um that can be rough yep um yeah kind of like going off the cuff here something i uh want to talk about that's kind of similar is um 
is taking workouts. So obviously you're injured. So Helen, you can't really go after your Helen mm -hmm. at, like normal. Um, I feel like that is something that we, we talk about a lot in class is something that's just really good training is like for me right now, um, I'm absolutely tired of being bad at the salt bike and absolutely tired of being bad at barbell cycling. So, um, on a workout, like maybe, uh, is it, yeah, grace 30 clean tricks for time, instead of doing singles, forcing yourself to go fives, no matter what, getting a slower time and being better. Um, I feel like a lot of the times we, we sacrifice the opportunity to, to train a little bit better for the sake of speed to, to go faster. Um, now granted some people that is where they need to work on is going faster. I know you've been talking to a lot of people about that, um, about the intensity piece, but I think that's what kind of what injuries bring out. And I think that's what we should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis is like, Hey, here's this Helen workout. You know, normally I break up kettlebell swings cause it makes me go faster. Maybe I should hang on to the kettlebell a little bit longer. So perfect example would be last week for me, Macho man. Oh yeah. I was in front of you if you remember workout. correctly. I hate it. I oh, I remember. I love, I, <laughs> I love heavy barbell. Yeah. Heavy barbell is my jam. Yep. So to make it safe for my shoulder, I did the fitness weights, which was just good for me. Now, granted, those are light for me. So, but I made myself. You got like do, a ton of rounds. I did so many. I think I, I did six rounds each, yeah. you know, well, five, six and five, uh, five plus or something. Mm -hmm. But it turned more into a high intensity, but I also made sure my jerks were perfect. Right. I was protecting my shoulder. I was making sure there was no dipping on my toes. and But the weight was light enough for me so that even though my heart rate was going through the roof, I just told myself, you got to hang on. I mean, you never you, stopped. I never stopped. You never stopped no, moving. I didn't stop moving. I, st I definitely <laughs> stopped moving. I stopped moving a lot. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm, I think that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to get through people's heads is that I'm not trying to hold them back. Like right. I think sometimes they think from a coach's standpoint, they think I'm trying to hold them back by them not wanting or not encouraging extra volume. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, or wait. or wait, like let's just move really, really well at high intensity. Yeah. Cause that's how you're going to get better. Like until you learn how to be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. those heavier weights, those faster workout, it, it's gonna, it's never going to get you better. You got to train the brain, but right. you got to make sure that you can move very well as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole point, you know, get that intensity through the roof. Yeah. And I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast, but I've definitely talked about it before is that when we did, um, Diane, so we had those deadlifts yeah. and handstand pushups. Now that's a pretty good workout for me in terms of like those two movements I like a lot. Instead we did, um, I don't know why we did it. Was it because of well, your we shoulder? Just, no. Or is it just something different? No, both of both of us, our die-in time is pretty fast. Well, and we've done it so many times at this point. We've, so we did uh, the strict press version, which was like the performance, and that was horrible. It was super that tough. Was really it was bad. a really good workout. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, I know we kind of want to talk about this this idea here, uh, chasing the dragon. Um, we see this a lot in ourselves and in other people throughout our training careers, but... Um, Basically, you have CrossFit, and we have we're kind of juggling a lot of different balls in terms of we got gymnastics, conditioning, weightlifting, and for some reason, and it's kind of different for everyone. Um, we're also juggling too body image, uh, you know, nutrition, weight goals, loss, weight goals. Gain. Yeah. Depends on your goals. And and basically, what ends up happening is that um, we're you know we get fixated on one, and it's and it's usually for dudes, it's the oh my snatch isn't big enough, or mm -hmm. I need to squat more, or I should be bigger. You know, I, I've been dealing with this for the last five years. Um, and, it, and it could be the same for like for women for the pull up. They, they get fixated on the pull up. Um, and what ends up, ends up happening is we find that people get so fixated on that. They start f biasing their training. And not to say that bias training isn't awesome. I'm not saying that if you want to just be a weightlifter, be a weightlifter. That's awesome. But if your goal is to get better at CrossFit or to get fitter and using CrossFit, um, you're doing yourself a huge disservice by chasing the dragon, which ideally means chasing something that, that kind of doesn't exist in a way. It's like you chase, you chase back squat, back squat, back squat, or snatch, or pull up, pull up, pull up, and then what kind of falls off is like y your conditioning goes down because you're spending so much time squatting or, or your gymnastics go down. And then what happens is it reverses. And you're like, oh, crap, my pull-ups are gone. So now you're like, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And the whole time, if you were just steadying, just keep doing a little bit of both, a little bit of all of it, a little bit of all of it, it all slowly goes up, but we get a little impatient. 
Is there anything that you've caught yourself like in the past? Like, is there something that you've chased? I definitely know that I have an exam. I have a couple examples for myself, but I was just curious if you had anything. I like mean, that. yeah, I think it's normal too, but I've also never, um, I've always been pretty good at sprinkling weaknesses in with strengths good. because I know that like, okay, I can thruster, do heavy thrusters, but can I do heavy thrusters and then go into muscle ups? Oh, so okay. I've always been pretty good about that. But something that's um, stayed with me from the competitors course that I took from CrossFit from Matt Chan and Chris Spieler right. was just get better at CrossFit. Yeah. Like, okay, you want your snatch to go up? Well, stop doing a crappy form snatch failing in the front. Your feet are all over the place. Your shoulders yeah. aren't opening up. Fig you know, like just... Focus on your mobility, moving better overall. Fix your air squat if it's wrong. It's not because mm -hmm. it's going to transfer over into your back squat, which right. is going to rob you of your your overall raw strength. So, like they said, they were like, if you want to be good, if you want to be good at the open, or you want to, you know, compete locally or do whatever, focus on doing CrossFit really well, moving really well, and you're going to be at the end of the day way better than the average person that's doing two hours of maybe Invictus has this workout and, Oh, I'm going to do this strength and conditioning piece. Oh, I'm going to do this, you know, this EMOM mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you know, I mean, and just constant and constant, constant instead of coming to class, destroying the workout, yeah. literally everything that you have, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Cause that's, that's the way, that's the way to get better. Right. You know, I mean, if there was a better way we would be doing it. Uh, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I learned like, as like as a gym, if we thought it was better that you trained for two hours, our classes would be two hours. There's Exa a reason why exactly. it's one hour and there's a reason why there's usually just one workout and maybe we have a strength before it, but there's a reason it works. Well, there's also, I mean, if you talk to any of the games athletes, now we're talking about anybody that's, you know, you know say they're shooting for the moon, which I encourage we both mm -hmm. do when they train all day long they can't train at high intensity. No. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a very calculated process. So instead, just come in, do the best that you have in that moment every day, right. train hard, have fun, mm -hmm. get better at something, whether it's your positioning, your right. pull, one little thing, one little tweak on the barbell, and just be like, sweet, yep. success. Get a win. Just get, get a win. win today. Just get a win. Yeah, especially if you only, if you only have that hour, like you have kids, you have a husband, you have a wife, you have a job, you have one hour. Yeah. That's, that's what you got. So get after it. Mm -hmm. Um, no, absolutely. Um, that the idea that doing more isn't always better. No. Um, I mean, granted, if you're trying to go to that next level and you have the time, yeah. cool. But oh, yeah. also I think what happens is Instagram, they don't really show that, oh, I got nine hours of sleep last night and oh yeah, I don't really have a job that's super stressful that I can train more often and oh yeah, I could spend four hours in the gym and two of that was mobilizing and warming up and cooling say, down. And you I know? saw my, you know, dry needling and I had, exactly, you my know, massage therapist. my massage therapist mm -hmm. and, you know, had the TENS unit on me for whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. It's, and I'm not taking anything away from those people. They're oh, they amazing. Oh, their butts off. Like that's, it's just, obviously their lifestyles are kind of inducive to that kind of training and what you don't see, you see on Instagram is, is the snatch, you know, their, their 280 snatch that was like a moment. Uh, what led up to that was a lot of prep. And what after that is a lot of recovery, recovery, recovery. So if you can only get five hours of sleep because you got a baby or you got a job, you know, then maybe it's not a good idea to do extra. <laughs> maybe just that class might be the, the best right. deal. Oh. And then also, I mean, it's another whole podcast, which I hope we can talk about soon, is the nutrition portion. You know, I mean, you can't train at that level without dialing in your nutrition or your inflammatory response is going to be so through the roof mm -hmm. that you never can improve just on that alone. Your body's just going to be constantly inflamed, never recovering, never getting better. So if right. your food's crappy, you're overtraining, you know, yeah. not sleeping. There's a reason why it's the base of that pyramid, the, the, the hierarchy of an athlete, the development of an athlete. There's a reason why we have that in the, on the blackboard in the gym. I, I love that because it, it, it's it's usually upside down. It's usually we're so worried about our times, mm -hmm. which is sport, which is at the top, which should be the last thing we're worried about. We're so worried about that instead of just the foundation. And who would have thought that um, if you, I, I, I say this all the time, if you would take an, replace one of your training days 
with an extra rest day and you focused on weighing and measuring your food, you'd probably get more results in three months than working out twice as much. At like two hours a day, five days, six days a week. Instead, work out three to four days a week, get on the committed club and rock your food, rock it. You know, mm-hmm. get a couple of Scott Cafe meals every once in a while. Absolutely. Make your own food, food prep, do whatever you need to do and kill that. You know, and if that means that you can't make the gym on a uh, Friday because you need to go home and prep your food instead and you have other things like your kid's got a baseball game or whatever, I feel like if you put that in front, I feel like you'd get more results all around. 100%. Cool. I realized that I said absolutely like six times. So absolutely. I was like, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I was like, 100%. <laughs> it's a cold. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> this is conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> mouse is absolutely, absolutely, I can't even say it. I know, right? Absolutely 66 times. Oh my God. That means the world's going to end. <laughs> Alex Jones. They have no idea what we're talking about. No um, idea. And I think that's a perfect time for us to wrap it up. Absolutely. Um, thanks for sending Absol- me. Absolutely. Absol- I almost started to. However, I you just You owe want- me a burpee every I time know. you say absolutely. I know. One more thing though. Uh, reach out to us guys. Like if you're like, what do you think I'm missing? How can I get better? If you have that question... Now, five minutes before class starts, that might not be mm-hmm. the best time, but like pull us aside and be like, hey, some, can I grab you for five minutes at some point? Because w- we love to help you and it also helps us know what your goals are. So then in a workout or in a class setting, we might be able to dial you in that much more yep. once we figure out well, what are your goals? Do you just, you know, here to right. have fun and, and get better at this or so talk to us you know grab mm-hmm. tiffany grab zach grab any of us and, and our emails are pretty easy it's absolutely. our first name at cross and uh we respond to that pretty quick we sure do um and i and i also kind of want to throw one thing to it we're not trying to demonize wanting to get better at crossfit as a sport or, or to do all. more because we'd be hypocrites because i because i do the class and and then a little bit extra but it's it's done in a way that I know that is going to be recoverable, you know, that, that I can do that and still recover. And there's days that I still spill over, especially in a class when I feel lethargic, I know I've gone too far and I kind of bring it back around. So just to say that that's not, we're not by any means demonizing, wanting to get better at CrossFit. You shouldn't feel bad for wanting it or for asking us, you know, what sh- we should be doing, but maybe don't be surprised that we might be saying, keep doing the classes, just doing them this way. Right. And that's not wrong. And just let us help you. Like, let us figure out what your goals are because we might be able to just do one or two little tweaks and could kind of change could change a lot for you. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for sitting down with me. All right. And I'll see you guys at the gym. Thank you. See you. I said absolutely so much. Absolutely. I did. I said it so much. And I did.